Hi everybody, Taylor Smith here with the Contact Fit Wellness Committee. Uh, thank you for joining us here today for, uh, I'd say, this year's um, wellness education session. As a lot of you know, we try to do a number of these throughout the year so that employees not only have an opportunity to earn points towards, towards their wellness plan, but we also try to provide good information that employees can take and, and help you know, improve their, their overall health, whether it be their physical health, their mental health, or even their financial health. But obviously with the, this year's uh, pandemic, uh, bringing uh, visitors on site to be able to conduct these wellness sessions and as well as bring you guys into a room to have them in person has been rather difficult to plan for. So when the opportunity presented itself to, to have one of our wellness sessions for this year, we wanted to make it extra special. So we've got something special planned for today. We're going to talk about um, heart healthy uh, nutrition and meal prep. And to do that, we've brought in our friends from Hub City Farmers Market. We've got Raven and Jordan here, who are not only gonna talk about uh, some heart healthy recipes that they're gonna prepare for us uh, here on the video today, but we're also gonna talk about a lot of the produce and options that they brought with them that they're gonna go into these meals that were sourced um, from the Hub City Farmers Market here in Spartanburg and, and a number of their, the, the farms that they, that, that they support. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Jordan and Raven. Well, thank you guys for having us and allowing for us to come in and make some healthy dishes today. Um, as you know, we're into fall, even though it's starting to feel like summer in the afternoon and then fall in the mornings. But we're going to make a butternut squash soup today, as well as some salad in a jar salad. So this is great just because if you're working as obviously you guys are um, you're able to prep this whether it be in the morning if you get home from work and need a quick dish to put on um, and then the salads you know we're going to do those in a jar so that way you can keep them for lunch for several days over the week so those can typically last about three to five days so what we'll do to go ahead and get started um, as you see we have our butternut squash here uh, which is pretty cool. I did go ahead and start peeling it just to save some time, but what you'll use is a potato peeler to peel the peel off first. And I'll just start sort of here since it is rounded. So while you're peeling that, what is it that you would look for in a butternut squash if you're looking to buy one from the farmer's market or at your local grocery? What, what's something you would look for in a good butternut squash? Well, typically what we like to look for is really the size, um, just to so you know how much you're wanting to fix and prepare. So this is actually more so on the medium size. <laughs> this can actually get really, really big. So sometimes you can have a butternut squash, probably is about as big as this table. It just sort of depends. So that's like a family of four squash yeah. <laughs> right there. Yeah, so this is good. So if it's just you, yourself, and you're wanting to cook, um, some soup and maybe it lasts for lunch, dinner, and maybe the next lunch. This will be good for that. And as you'll see, we'll add a lot of other veggies, which is what I love about soup is that we can add a ton of veggies and we're even going to add an apple today. So we're getting some fruits and veggies into this one dish. So I think that's something you know important when you're talking about the, the value of healthy eating. You know, some people have the misconception that it might be expensive. But if you, you plan properly and you know what you're looking for, you not you don't end up in a situation that a lot of people end up in where they overbuy or underbuy at the grocery store. So being able to kind of you know, look at, at the produce you're buying and know, you know, planning ahead how much you need for, for the number of days you want it to carry you over through the week in your meal planning or the number of people that you know in your family that you want to feed, that right. that's a that's something that, that uh, helps out in that meal planning process. And the great thing about squash and apples and onions that we have here for this soup is it's very um, shelf friendly so it will last a while so if you buy everything at the market on Saturday it should last you the rest of the week if you don't get to it right away so that is something to look for is uh, shelf stable foods that are not in cans or not processed so fresh. And one thing with vegetables that a lot of people forget about is that you can freeze them. So chop them up in small pieces, just like you would for I didn't know that. the soup. Yeah. <laughs> and you can freeze them, chop them up and freeze them. You know, put them in a Ziploc bag or if you have a, a container that is freezer safe, do that and that way you can eliminate waste. Oh, wow. And that's something that we talk about a lot. And even with soup, you can freeze the soup. So if you make a lot, you get one of those big 
squash and you say, hey, I'm just not gonna eat this, save it and freeze it. And then all you have to do is just put it in some water, let it um, defrost mm -hmm. and then reheat wow. it and it's good to go, so. I did not know you could you could freeze vegetables like that. That's, yeah. That's <laughs> So that's always, we always try to look at ways that we can, I'm gonna use this yeah. spoon here. Um, so as you see it, I'm just going back and forth, sorry. You're good. So as you can see, we have gotten where the seeds are. So you do wanna de-seed this. <laughs> and what's interesting is that in Australia and New Zealand, they actually call and we call it butternut squash, but they call it a butternut pumpkin. Ah. <laughs> and the seeds actually kind of look like pumpkin seeds. They do. They look a whole lot like pumpkin yeah. seeds. But I guess they're they're both gourds, yeah. right? Yeah. So. So we'll just de-seed these. Yeah, I've we'll... already chopped up some. Don't worry about chopping them up nicely. That's the good thing again about soup is literally just chop it up and throw it in the pan. Do people roast the seeds like you would a pumpkin seed? Um, I'm not sure if that's a thing. I'm sure you probably you probably could. They're in the same family, so they probably would taste pretty similar. We actually have some pumpkin seeds that we're going to use for this salad today. And so today we are actually going to blend this first and then just salt and cook it on the stove. You could actually do this in a crock pot as well. So again, if you're working, say that you're coming into work and you know that you need something for dinner, chop this up, put it in a crock pot. You can cook it on low for about six to eight hours and then it'll be ready once you get home. Um, if you're only gonna be you know, away for a few hours, you can cook it on high and it'll be done in three to four hours. So nice. that's always, once you're, you know, when you're working and you're looking for ways to just be sustainable, to make sure that you can still eat healthy and not have to cook a full dinner that's going to take two hours when you get home and that's what usually causes us to go to places yep. that are fast food because we don't have time and so i love something where i can put it on and leave if you're working from home you know that's a good option too and of course now you know this year if you've got some older kids that are at home doing homeschooling anyways you could just exactly. make this part of their job because they need to have dinner ready when you get home yeah they can give it a quick stir every two hours that's right mm -hmm. So we have this up, we have this chopped. What I'm gonna have Jordan do is chop the garlic and onion. So I always like to use red onion over the yellow or white, but either one doesn't matter. Um, more colors, the better. And so we will use one whole onion and then we will only use four cloves of the garlic. And so as she chops those. So one onion and four cloves of the garlic. Yes, and because we're using the whole onion, we'll cut off both sides before we peel it. And if onions burn your eyes, um, one tip is you can put it in the refrigerator one hour before you eat it, and then it won't be as stinging. <laughs> so you're not crying in the kitchen. <laughs> okay, so outside of the squash so we're using the squash we have the onion the garlic she's going to saute that that way we just get some of that good flavor to come out in that soup and then we're going to add one green apple we're just going to add a little bit of tartness to it i like that it's one of my Bring, bringing out that those fall flavors and then we have some carrots here that were actually grown at our farm and that farm is located where in Sparver? So we're at 498 Howard Street. So if you know where VCOM is or Wofford, we're over in that direction. And our Saturday market is the longest running market in the upstate. So we're open pretty much every month of the year. Um, regular season is April to December 12th, but we do have winter markets the third Saturday of January, February, and March. But our Saturday market and our farm are in the same location, so on Howard Street. And our farm is open every day of the week, and it's a half-acre sustainable farm. And we educate kids on how to eat healthy and how to eat local and through our education program. So if you have your kids working from at school at home, then you know, bring them by the farm for a little daily activity. We'd be happy to have you. And that's all, so that's all located downtown. You don't have to go out to the countryside yeah. to, to get to any of that. And, and 
a lot of you who've been with us for a few years now know recognize Subcity Farmers Market. Um, at least on first shift, we typically have at least every other week have their mobile farmers market come out on site to Locust Grove and Wingo Park to uh, where employees can go onto the trailer and and buy produce here at Contact from there from that trailer. Um, obviously, we haven't been able to do that uh, very much this year, but um, we are hoping to bring them back uh, probably in February or, or a little later, maybe little, April. Around April, yeah. yeah, around April to have them start coming back on a on a weekly rotation to the our various sites here in Spartanburg. So you might, uh, you know, if you're as part of your meal prep, you might be able to swing by during the week and pick up some of this great produce that you see here that's uh, that's in season. Yeah. So everything here is grown within 50 miles or so. Um, the squash is from Mr. Jackson Farms. The apples, TK Family Farms, and these are not local <laughs> don't look at these um and then the lettuce is tiger river um, farms hydroponic very cool and so i've chopped up all of the fruits and the veggies that we're going to use like i said just chop them up either way you know it doesn't have to be perfect you have some big pieces in here um, these will actually go ahead and get blended with our vegetable broth now you can use a vegetable stock or a broth the only difference is that the broth has more of a water base to it um, what I like about this recipe is that we're using a lot of things that we already have in your kitchen. So our goal is to not have you go out and have to buy a ton of ingredients to make this. Um, like the vinegar here is from home, your cinnamon that we'll use, um, nutmeg, salt and pepper. Those are staples that every household typically has. Um, and then we'll use the broth instead of the stock today. And we'll use two, about two cups of that um, for blending. Ah. Oh. <laughs> yep. You got it. Six? Um, Five? You said it gets pretty hot, so. Yeah, if you want it to really start boiling, you'll put it at 10. I think six is a good, safe place to be. So our farmer's market also has this olive oil for sale. It's a really cool story. His, it's Arena Lottie, and he has a, um, an olive vineyard in Greece, and he processes it he brings the olives over here and he processes the oil here. So it's oh. really, really awesome. That makes him horrible. <laughs> <laughs> Greece, you know, Greece, Spartanburg. Processed here. That's great. Yeah, I cannot see. <laughs> oh, that's cooking. So you just want to cook it just enough so it gets a bit translucent so it doesn't have to get too. Um, you know, brown on the edges, you don't really have to have it that cooked since it will go into the uh, crock pot or your stove top. Probably better to almost undercook it a little bit than overcook yeah, it, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so what I will do is just go ahead, while she is continuing with the garlic, is go ahead and put this into the blender here. I'm just gonna move you on around you. I like always makes my fingers sticky. <laughs> I'm just going to throw these in. Whoop! <laughs> Baby's flying everywhere. We'll put that in the blooper reel. <laughs> So how, that's, that, see, I know it'll probably cook down, but how much do we think that'll make in terms of the soup? Because it seems to be getting pretty high up there in the blender. We're thinking this would probably hold over. So this can make about four to six servings. Four to six servings. Uh, so that's why I like to, uh, when it comes to soups, I like to pair it with a salad, like we'll do today. Um, if you're having it for dinner, obviously, then you'll have a larger serving, and you can still pair it with the salad as well. Um, you could even do, the good thing with this soup is if you wanted to add a whole grain to it, so if you wanted to have some rice or quinoa on the side, uh, just to make it a bit more filling, um, and of course you want to get in that good fiber, then you can do that as well, but the good thing with this is that it has the fiber from the apples, yeah. um, the butternut squash is great with vitamin A, just one cup of butternut squash will give you your full serving of vitamin A that you need, and that's wow. good for your bone health. Um, and then also the carrots, 
the squash as well is gonna get that beta carotene in, which is gonna be good for your skin, your eyes, and so um, just a lot of a lot of nutrition in here, just in a soup. Yeah, that, those butternut squashes I was reading had a lot of carotenes in it, almost you know, like a carrot, so yeah, you know, it's like an antioxidant, so it's it's got a lot of. Uh, value there in terms of uh, helping eliminate free radicals that may lead to a variety of types of cancers. Exactly. You've got that fiber that's going to, you know, that's good for the heart health. Yeah. Um, and also gives you that full feeling um, so that you're not, you know, overeating. Um, plus the, the high in protein count uh, helps to, uh, you know, burn, burn that fat uh, in the body. That's awesome. Yeah, and that's, again, that goes back to soups, is that soups allows for you to hide a lot of those veggies. So if you have kids, yeah. I know you do. Uh, sometimes it's not the easiest as adults for us to get our veggies in. So if you're struggling with that, throw them into your, a soup and, and add some nice seasonings and you're able to sort of hide that. So uh, we'll go ahead and blend this here. Watch out. <laughs> broth instead of like a chicken broth gotcha uh, and then we're using coconut milk instead of just your basic uh, like heavy cream so if you don't like coconut milk you can easily substitute that to the heavy cream or like half and half either one of those would work just fine awesome um, but I like the little hint of the coconut yeah it's a little sweeter yeah and um, good for your meatless Monday activities without much effort so now that we have this cooking here, what we'll do, um, let's see. I turned it off. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll put this on like a medium, medium heat, and we'll add a dash of cinnamon. So one thing is I do not measure 
That's we're just fine. gonna sprinkle some of that on there. You can't have too much cinnamon. Sprinkle a little bit of that. You can always taste it and decide if you want to add yeah. more too. So. Well, due to COVID, we're not gonna do any of the No, no, not gonna do that, but at home. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. And then just one dash of the nutmeg, or two, or three. <laughs> <laughs> And Himalayan pink sea salt. Himalayan sea salt. That's already. Let's do a little bit of that. The cool thing with using um, this soup is that a lot of people can add things like chili paste, make it a bit spicy if you want. A little more caliente. Yeah. The garnishes could be tailored to whatever you like. Today we're going to do some pumpkin seeds on here, our pepitas. As they're also known as. Um, you could garnish this with some arugula if you wanted to, oh. and that'll really bump up the nutrition on that. Um, honestly, anything. We could. We have a little bit of the smoked paprika. I like it a little smoky, that sweet and smoky. Yeah. It's a nice. Mix it up. I don't think there's any wrong way to do it, yeah, really, right? Yeah, it's not. When you're making soup, there's no wrong way. And so, I have just a basic coconut milk. You could get this for like a dollar at the grocery store. And we'll just use half a can of this. It's gonna make it real smooth, a little sweet. Whoop! Um, <laughs> I'm dial it back a little bit or you just get it out of there. I know, it was only on five. Okay, we have it on three now. Oh, we got hot. And we're gonna make the recipe for, for everything we're making today uh, available with with the video, there'll be a link uh, to a PDF copy that you can you can pull off of the website that we're going to post this video at. Uh, so don't feel like you need to take notes during all this in terms yeah. of, of what we're doing. You can certainly uh, you know, fast forward or rewind this video as you feel needed, and, and the, uh, they'll be right there. Or you can head on down to Hub City Farmers yeah. Market, find Jordan and Raven, and, and, <laughs> and have them give you a refresher course. Yeah, we'll point you in the right direction. What's yeah. great about South Carolina and its seasons is when you're craving something like soup, it's typically in the colder months and that's when we have these types of ingredients available. So, you know, South Carolina is great with its four seasons and the produce that's available. We, we do have some employees that are gonna be joining us from around the U.S. Uh, we've got a, a number of remote employees that are gonna be uh, hopefully going out to their own local farmer's markets, which I think have, just like Hub City, become more prevalent even in the urban settings. So hopefully they'll be able to find some seasonal uh, produce that they can mix in and get creative with their own soups. Yeah, definitely. So we're going to let this simmer for about 20 to 30 minutes. Um, and then while that's cooking, we're going to go ahead and make our salads. Okay. Okay, so we have our salad mix here. We got this from Tiger River Farms. This is also available on our mobile market. So again, mm -hmm. easy access. Today we're going to make four of these. Again, if you wanted to have these for lunch during the week, I love them because they last three to five days in the refrigerator. It's all about how you fill them up. So you don't want to put in your um, veggies at the bottom with the dressing because then it's going to be all soggy. Yeah. <laughs> so what we like to do is we'll start with making the honey Dijon vinaigrette is the dressing we're going to use. It's really light, not heavy, where it's adding those extra calories, which obviously is not uh, benefiting your heart. Uh, and then we will add our apples, the green apple. So let's see. What we're going to use for the vinaigrette is one of my staples in my house, apple cider vinegar. Right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Honey. This is local honey um, from Honey Bees. They're also locally sourced here in Campobello. Mm -hmm. um, and we also always have a honey vendor at our Saturday market, so you can always check that out. You know, somebody told me about local honeys that if you if you move to an area and, and you develop you know, allergies because you're not used to that climate or, or the, the the general flora and fauna in that in that region, that if you if you take a spoonful of local honey every day for like a month, because it has all that, that bee pollen in there, right, from the local flora, mm -hmm. flora and fauna, you kind of develop the, the immunities to the, and uh, that, that help you overcome those, those allergies. I, I thought that was pretty cool because I've always suffered from allergies. Yeah, that uh, is true. And 
I like to put teaspoon of honey in my smoothies every morning to make it a little sweeter. So for kids too, that's an easy way to hide certain ingredients in smoothies. What I do is I chop up my fruits and my kale and I put it in a mason jar and then I freeze it overnight. And then I use that as my smoothie so that way I don't have to get ice. But local honey, not the honey you local get at the store, than the little honey bear. This is my honey jar. <laughs> <laughs> Go through a lot. Wow. Yeah, just like you said, the local honey is, is what you want to use versus something that's probably come from on the other side of the country. Because <laughs> yeah, right. it's not, it's not going to be as beneficial. Um, so what are you putting in your bowl right now, Raven? So right now I have one tablespoon of the ground uh, Dijon mustard. And then I have one tablespoon of the apple cider vinegar. You just need a little bit of acid there. And then we'll add our local um, olive oil. So, let's get this. And one thing, uh, the difference between making your own versus going to a store, like I said, I like to eyeball it. You don't need a ton of, a ton of oil. Um, Store-bought can have a lot of sodium, and so that will cause you to have high blood pressure. Yep. Uh, so you want to always, if you are, you just feel like you don't want to make it, you don't feel confident, always make sure you're getting something that has low sodium in the dressing. Uh, but making it yourself is so easy because usually you have these things at home, you know. We, didn't, the, we didn't really have to buy any, any of this stuff. All so. those artificial or, or added uh, yeah, the ingredients added for flavor and for, for, for preservation. The extra sugar that's unneeded, you know, you can just use honey or maple syrup, organic maple syrup is good too. And just like salad dressing, you know, spaghetti sauce and um, what else would have a lot of sugar? Spaghetti sauce has a ton of sugar, so just make sure you keep an eye on that label. But you could just simmer a bunch of tomatoes or um, cherry tomatoes down and add your own sugar in it. You know, you, you have control over that measurement. And that even goes with the broth. Uh, one thing is that broth can have a lot of sodium, yeah. like almost 600 milligrams, which doesn't sound like a ton. It's a ton. A that's a lot, you know? And so if you can find one that has low sodium, fat free, that's going to be a better option for you because you have to find those ways, even though you may not be adding a lot of salt to your dish, they could be hidden in all these other ingredients that you're using. So this is done. It looks nice. Ooh, that looks good. And just a just a easy um, dressing here. And what we'll do is pour that at the bottom. So again, put it at the bottom of the jar so that way if you're you're storing it for a day or two, it doesn't get everything all soggy and yeah. emulsified. <laughs> right. Yeah, then it won't be that good. See, I, I would have done the opposite, not thinking about that and, and yeah, come back to a jar of mud. <laughs> well, because you think about pouring your dressing on top, but yeah, you want to put the dressing in at the bottom. Um, you don't need a ton because it goes a long way, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. You're not looking to drown it, you're just looking to lightly coat it. Well, and the good thing is with the uh, salad that we're using today, we're going to be adding some dried cranberries as well as the apples are already going to give it some flavor. It's going to already, you know, saturate your salad and your greens. So you really don't need that much. And because this is like an oil base with the vinegar, it'll saturate those greens well. So nice. now what we'll do is just go ahead Honestly, you could just put it in here like that, but I like to have small bites of lettuce. Makes it a little easier to get out of the jar also, right? Yeah, well, so you can either eat it in the jar or you could just dump it on, or your, dump on your plate. It in the <laughs> Easy. One thing we don't want to do is have more dishes. <laughs> no, <true. laughs> we don't want more dishes. That's the other enemy of cooking at home. Yes, it, exactly. Make it as easy as possible. And don't be afraid to stuff those greens. I like to get at least about two cups of greens in there, just so I know that I'm making this very filling. And you can squish those down pretty far. So you wanna? It's a pretty good looking jar. I need to get more lettuce. Oh. Mm -hmm. And then, um, easy as that, tear it in in two. Don't even need a knife. Yep. No no dishes, no knives to clean, right? Exactly. Well, and, and that's the thing, you know, the more work it is, the more intimidated we can be when it comes to cooking, and we, we don't want to feel that way. Nope. 
Dale, can you grab that other um, lettuce bag? Right here? Right yeah. So today we are using the salad mix, but we do uh, have kale that is also locally sourced. Kale is so great with that vitamin K, the calcium. If you are a plant-based eater, you don't, you know, uh, consume dairy. This is a nice way to get calcium. Okay. Um, so that's always good, and it's also really, really good with the salad that we're uh, yeah. <laughs> making today. So if you wanted to do that. So now that we have the greens in there, what we'll do is go ahead and um, add our walnuts and the cranberries over here. Again, these are things that we already had at home. I like to snack on nuts. Definitely good for your heart. Yeah. Yeah, um, good, good, good fatty acids, right? Good omegas. Omegas. The walnuts are in here, so that's good for your brain. The um, almonds are also in here, so that's gonna add the extra protein. Um, if you wanted to make this for a full meal and add a animal protein, then you could also put the meat uh, down at the bottom. So you obviously, you know, cook that first um, and then add the meat to the bottom because that could soak up the uh, dressing there. And then this also has the dried cranberries and raisins in it. Yeah, that's not bad. So we do that. I always love to add pumpkin seeds. <laughs> Pumpkin seeds have so many nutritional benefits. Um, also for men, if you didn't know, they're good for your prostate. So. Good to know. <laughs> good to know. I always, I always like to throw that in there. They're also one of the um, most natural sources of magnesium, which is something that a lot of us uh, are sort of deprived of here on the Western hemisphere of the world. So why is that? Don't know. Not so. sure. <laughs> I'm not sure why, why we're deprived of it. I don't know if that's something that just happened over time. I want to add a little bit more to these. Interesting. Um, but it's a good way. I know that the lack of magnesium causes a lot of issues with high blood pressure. Um, so it's a nice way to regulate that. It also has issues, has caused people to have issues with um, their heart health. So magnesium is also something that a lot of people uh, could take and can buy it at a drugstore. But why not get it? from food, which is where it's, we're supposed to get it from anyways. Well, and supplements are just meant to supplement, right? It's when you're not getting enough of that right, stuff in your diet. Right, because you're not eating it in your diet. It's, exactly. not, it's not meant to actually replace it. Like leafy greens, for instance, are, are high in folate, which is the natural version of what is synthetically or is a supplement called folic acid, mm -hmm. which that has a number of benefits. And I'm looking at the cheat sheet that's located on the floor. <laughs> uh, vitamin B. But that folate also helps with the high blood pressure um, and, and uh, also helps uh, uh, keep the, the walls uh, of your arteries cleared. I just cut it real small and put it on top. Oh, I don't like this knife. Let's see. Yeah, that's the one. And then we're going to add the green apple. I usually use about half of an apple in these. Now the apples, since these are a hard veggie, I would typically put these at the bottom, um, but we didn't do that. <laughs> but it's okay. The greens will be nice and saturated, and these are going to get eaten. So if you're eating, if you're going to eat this now, it doesn't really matter how you put it in there. <laughs> right. But if you're going to do it where it's going to stay in the fridge for three to five days, then you want to put the apples at the bottom. But I made this for you all to eat today, so. <laughs> so we're just going to throw it in there. We're just going to show you how, how it's done. The camera crew is salivating now that you've mentioned there's going to be free giveaways. Yeah. <laughs> I've been eating this all week, so practicing. So this was your meal prep for this <laughs> yeah, week? Exactly. Awesome. My husband said, are we going to have to eat more butternut squash when you get back? I said, yes. <laughs> I know we, we've only eaten it twice already. <laughs> well, you know, it would almost be crazy to try to completely switch and go go full, full healthy, you know, every day of the week right off the bat. You know, yeah. I've always liked the approach of you know, work your way into it, get comfortable with it. You know, start off with two days of the week that you're yeah. replacing two days of the week where you normally were going and, and sitting in the drive through line on the way home from work or or you know throwing a stofers in the oven you know, take get rid of two of those days and, and concentrate on planning for two right once you get comfortable with that process increase it from there so you're not overwhelming yourself right 
Um, and, and you, you know, you got to also be able to plan for the unexpected, right? You, know, you had the plan to do it one night, but then <laughs> something came up you, exactly. had to, you had to take care of and, and you just have to be able to push it out. Um, and just making awesome. some quick switches is good too. You know, instead of white bread, do whole wheat and right. multi-grain. And um, you know, instead of a bagel, maybe doing an English muffin and maybe switching your coffee creamer from that really sugary one to half and half with a little bit of um, sweet and low or Splenda in there. So I now so. use a coconut milk based creamer. And I like that a lot more because it's got that natural sweetness yeah. to it already. I don't need to add any sugar to it. Mm -hmm. But every once in a while, you know, a little bit of ice cream, go for it. Yeah. I do it. I eat it all don't the time. Don't want to shock the system. Though. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, and it's all about balance, you know. It's not that foods are bad. It's just that sometimes we just don't need as much of it. And so it's just creating that balance. So like she said, uh, Meatless Monday is always good. And honestly, salad in a jar parties are a thing. Parties? They are. You haven't heard. You haven't been invited. I have to not been. Yet. Well. <laughs> Pandemic, yeah, right, had many right. parties this year. <laughs> not that I'm not normally invited to them. Well, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, honestly, they're fun. You could do these any way that you wanted to. Um, there's a lot, like a, two cups of greens in this. So if you were to pour it out into a plate here, um, and we can do that. But you have a nice size meal. And then we're going to pair it with this soup. We may want to just check that and give it a stir. So it's looking really nice and creamy. Awesome. So all of this, the good thing is, it can all be customized. So if you wanted to add some um, candied pecans, even though, you know, it's not, it's it not bad. Helps give you that balance. Yeah, again, the balance, yeah. you know. And Ease so your way into it. The craisins, you know, we tried to get the 50% less sugar, so you're still, you're eating it what you typically would, but maybe right. just holding back a bit, so. Maybe add some strawberries and get a little more of that sweetness to it. Well, strawberries aren't in season right now. No. But if it were, well, they were yeah. yeah. Or blueberries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah. So, other than that, we have probably about 10 minutes or so left on the soup and so, we'll be ready to eat. So, really, just to give everybody kind of a scale of things, and I know they're watching at home, but really, this took us no more to, to, to plan out what is essentially a couple of days worth of of uh, uh, a salad and a soup to go with it um, for myself and, and or my family mm -hmm. it took us less than uh, 30 minutes really to, to, yeah. to put that together yeah. and the ingredients were all pretty simple there wasn't a whole lot of prep other than just the blending and the, yeah. the heating up of the soup uh, so yeah I mean we're talking inexpensive yeah. we're talking uh, healthy we're talking easy to prepare for, for just yourself or for your entire family so the access to be able to to, you know, to do the uh, plan and, and prepare healthy meals isn't shouldn't be intimidating, and that's part of our, our goal here today. Is not just to show you these recipes, but show you how easy they can be, um, so that uh, you, you feel empowered to try them out on your own. And I hope you do. Um, when I walk around the plant, I'd like hopefully I, I hear from some of you that you tried it at home, and maybe you, you tell me that you tried something a little different. Added an extra yeah. extra dab of uh, cinnamon or some chili paste. Or some chili paste. I know we've got <laughs> a couple of employees that probably would, would yeah. throw a whole tube of chili paste in there. <laughs> probably put some curry powder in some there. Curry. Yeah, so it's so customizable, and that's what I love about it is that you can make it your own. There is no right or wrong. It's just literally just having fun with it. Awesome. Well, I thank you all for uh, attending here today. Um, I know I learned a lot, and I hope you did as well. And um, I know we all look forward to hopefully having more of these in the future without masks, right? <laughs> but until then, I appreciate you all, and uh, thank you. Thank you. See you on Saturday.